Hello, I'm Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. In this mini-series, I'm looking at the preferences menu of Adobe Audition so you can get set up with everything to make great sounding audio. Today, we're looking at data and effects. Before we hop in, remember to help spread the word of this channel and get more audio producers involved, hit like on this video. And also, if you want to see more, subscribe and remember to ding the bell so you never miss another video. So here I am in Adobe Audition and two really great parts of the preferences menu today. On PC, it's under edit preferences. Under Mac, it's under the Adobe Audition menu, preferences. You can also hit control comma or command comma to get this up. And I'm going to go into data first and foremost. And this is why I love Adobe Audition. Here, you've got two little boxes ticked automatically. I advise leaving them ticked and leaving them as default. But just so you know what they do, I'll show you what they do. The first one, smooth delete cut boundaries when cro with crossfades of two milliseconds. Okay, so what this means is when I make a little delete or a cut in my waveform here, it's actually going to crossfade the cut I made uh, to make it sound smoother than just a standard cut where you can sometimes get like a click in audio. Let me increase the number of milliseconds to the maximum, 40, and show you how this works practically. If I zoom in now here and I make a dramatic cut from here to silence, there we go, let's do that. You can see there's a bit of a fade out, a 40 millisecond fade out going on on that audio. Let's play it back. Via a variety of computer and... Okay, so you heard it just faded off. Now, if I undo this, go back into the data area of preferences and make this zero milliseconds, and we'll try and do that cut again. You'll see now I get a very harsh cut and it's not going to sound so good. Variety of computer and it's like a click straight off like that. So Audition by default has that set at two milliseconds. I think that's sufficient and it's a nice little buffer. Uh, some audio editors definitely don't do that. And it's a required feature in my opinion. Down here, smooth all edit boundaries by crossfading five milliseconds. So when you're applying effects to your audio, it can actually crossfade in those effects to make them sound more natural. Uh, five milliseconds, you won't really hear a difference, although it does make a difference, an imperceptible one. If I push this right up to say, Let's make it 2,000 milliseconds. You can make this quite large, this number. Uh, this will be two seconds of crossfade. So now if I was to go and get some of the audio here and we can see, okay, so this is about two seconds here. So if I select all of this and then I add a really crazy effect, let's go into effects here. We'll go into modulation and we'll go to chorus and we'll put on a really crazy chorus here. Which my visitors and subscribers. Okay, that's definitely noticeable. Let's click apply and let's listen to how that effect fades in. Be available on demand in which my visitors and subscribers will be. So over two seconds, you hear that effect slowly fading in. And that is exactly what the second dialog box here in the data section of preferences is doing. It's cross fading any effect you place in on the waveform on your audio. But again, I'd leave that at default five milliseconds because ideally you want the effect to start immediately when you select. This is just a very small buffer, but it's good that you know what both of those do. Then under that, we've got maximum number of concurrent file processes. This is essentially how many files Audition can process at once. If you're doing batch processing or mixing down big multi-track sessions, you can, of course, increase this number, but 16 is the maximum. You get a big exclamation mark and it actually tells you that, yeah, that's probably a little bit high. So 15 is good. If you notice your version of Audition or your computer is not handling Audition so well, you can reduce that uh, to maybe get some better performance out of it. And then finally here for the data section, we've got sample rate conversion. Again, I generally leave this at 50% pre and post filter. What this is meaning is when you have audio of a certain sample rate and it needs to be converted, how much quality should it retain? So you can go to 100%, that's going to take much longer, or 0%, uh, that's not going to sound really good when it does the conversion. 50 is the happy medium, and most users will be quite happy with this. I would advise leaving it at that as well. And what this means is if I create a brand new multi-track session, and we'll call this 48,000. And then we'll select the sample rate as 48,000. And then I try and drag in an audio of a different sample rate. This one's recorded at 44,100. It says, okay, the sample rate is different. Do you want to convert it? Yes, and don't show this dialogue again. Okay, zip, it's doing the conversion. You didn't even notice it. And I created this trailer to... 
the audio doesn't really sound any different. So absolutely fine to leave it as is. And that's your data section of the Adobe Audition Preferences menu. But now let's hop back in and look at effects because this is a really interesting menu and it's going to help you with a lot of your effects you're using. First one, open effects settings window when adding effects to the effects rack. So that means when I go here and add an effect, like for instance, amplitude and compression dynamics, boom, it opens the window. If, of course, I untick this in my effects menu, let's click OK there, do that. Now, if I add another effect, filter and EQ, parametric equalizer, ah, no window. I have to double click to bring that up, OK? So generally, I'd advise leaving that behavior as ticked. It's a very handy one. Restore open effect settings windows when switching files is pretty much the same as restore open effect settings windows when opening sessions, OK? And what this means is, if I go into an effect here, dynamics, and I do some crazy stuff with a compressor, make the threshold minus 60 and the ratio 8, when I go over to another file here and I want to go ahead and add another dynamics effect, you will see that when I open this up, boom, I've got everything retained, although in this case it didn't retain it, and that's probably because... I've unticked the open effect setting windows when adding to effects rack. So as long as you've got this, it will restore anything that you've done previously. Let's go back and show you that again. So over here, let's add in a dynamics effect and do a crazy effect. So let's go into dynamics and we'll open this up and we'll go at threshold minus 60, ratio eight, like that. We'll apply that all and then we'll go back over here. I'm just gonna go back into the effects menu, make sure this is ticked and everything is ticked there. Now we'll go in and add another dynamics effect like that. Uh, and for some reason, it is resetting. I have no idea why it's doing that in this particular instance. It should be restoring the open effect settings uh, when switching between the files. And I think actually what that means is that if I switch back to this and I go back in and add in a bit of amplitude and compression dynamics, uh, it's still default. So for some reason, that is not working as it should in this instance. The same with multi-track. It should bring back all the settings that you've got, uh, but perhaps because I applied it and I didn't close out of the effect, it hasn't retained them. So remember, by default, you really want these ticked. For me, it didn't work in the example there, uh, but generally it does retain your effects settings that you have. But if you always want to go back to a clean default effect uh, on any effects rack that you're using, then untick these. Under here, retain partially process effects data on cancel. Uh, so if you actually cancel out of an effect and you wanted to retain the effects, let's actually enable this. I've got a feeling it's going to do what I wanted in the first place. Let's go into, uh, it might be because I'm doing it through the effects rack. Let's go into effects and let's go to uh, amplitude and compression dynamics. And then I'm going to change things like this, close out, and then I'm going to go back in to effects, amplitude and compression dynamics. And yes, the same effects have come back. Let's actually check on this. Now, I think because I'm cancelling, not exiting, let's go to amplify and let's make this uh, 48 dB. Cancel out. It's still 48 dB. Again, if I go into amplitude and compression dynamics, change this to minus 60 and 8 again. Close out of it. Let's cancel out of it. Go back in to the dynamics. It's still there. What if I add a new dynamics effect? Uh, that's going back to the previous settings that I applied in the effects menu. So that's how it's retaining. Anything in the effects menu is retained. Anything in effects rack is not retained in memory. So good to know when you're ticking all of these. I'm going to tick this off. Process bypassed effects during playback. Okay, so if I go ahead over here and I bypass some effects, if I have that dialog box ticked under effects, it's going to still process the, those effects even though I untick them. Uh, so generally you want this off because it takes more of your computer's CPU and resources to process effects. So you generally want to untick that so it's not processing disabled effects. Uh, if you're having like a big problem with your computer, definitely keep this unticked. If you want everything processed no matter what, tick this. But again, I wouldn't really recommend it. Sort effects menu by vendor and category. Okay, let's click out of this, click okay. 
In effects, we have plugins, and by default, it's the vendor, waves, and then the category of effect that we're working with. But you can do it the other way around in the effects menu, and you can say, okay, well, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to show me the category, then the vendor. So click OK to that, effects, and now we've got all our different categories of effects, and then the vendor, in this case, waves that I'm working with. Over in effects menu here, uh, we've also got preview editor. This will automatically show the preview editor when an effect which changes the duration of your audio is available for preview. Okay, this is default behavior. If I went to this audio and I went into effects and I went to time and pitch, stretch and pitch process, immediately I get a preview window here showing me what's going to happen after the effect applies. However, if I go in and add a compressor, by default, it's not gonna show me the preview window. The preview window can be handy to see what's happening to your waveform uh, when you're applying these effects. So you might want to go into effects and turn it on completely for every single effect. And then when I go back into effects and I go to amplitude and compression dynamics, boom, I've got that. Uh, and you can see that rather blocky audio at the moment. Uh, let's switch this on, go to default, and you can see exactly what is going to happen to your audio. It's going to be super compressed at the moment because uh, of the settings that I've got. Uh, but of course, this is really helpful to have this preview window to see what is happening to your audio when you're adding any effect to your audio before you click apply and add it to your audio. Again, by default, you may well want to leave this as when an effect which changes the duration is available. I would actually probably tick it on any effect because then you can really see a before and after view. Or if you don't want the preview window, window at all, you can just untick this completely and leave it as disabled. Uh, but that is a walkthrough really of the data and the effects area. You can see it's quite complex, even for me to get my head around, but hopefully you understand it a little bit more after watching this walkthrough. And remember, if you wanna understand even more about Adobe Audition, go over to my courses that open for enrollment right now at mrc.fm forward slash learn. That's mrc.fm forward slash learn. And if everything wasn't super clear in this tutorial, do be sure to leave a comment and I'll clarify in the comments down below.